But anyway, I guess we'll get started then if I, uh, let me get my notes here and uh, I'm using a braille display to kind of keep track of my notes so I kind of, what I'm doing here. I get lost my place. Oh, my phone tanked out on me. Anyway, to start as an introduction, when I get these notes going, <clears throat> I'm not sure how many people we have here. What do we have? About four or five people? Just kind of get an idea. Okay. Yeah, we're getting there. I'm just wanting to. There we go. I had a, my phone timed out, so I had to re find my notes again. <laughs> But anyway, now we're good. Yeah, okay. Well, I just have to adjust this, don't I? Okay. No, I had to use a portable microphone, unfortunately, like this. So. Now, I'll slow the speech down a little bit, just so we could, then I can start getting into it and discussing it a bit more. Enter new rate, colon. Set speech rate to 200. Okay, we'll try that. Don't give me very long wires to work with. Though. Anyway, I um, wanted to bring up the, the idea here that the question being not can blind people use a, a Linux machine, but I want the assumption to be that we do. And so what I wanted to demonstrate today is to move on and say, here are the different, some solutions that we'll use. That we'll use, uh, you know, to make a Linux accessible. So basically, I find my notes is kind of messed up here. Right, so. What I wanted to, uh, to start with is that <clears throat> what you really have is a, a need for getting the, the, Linux, uh, the output from a Linux machine in a form that we can hear it or see it. So a blind person can either use it with some kind of spoken output or somebody with low vision might see a bigger screen. And so you can get bigger monitors or you can use magnifiers. There's some applications that will magnify the type. You might even see them or on some desktops you can bump the font size up however big you want. And then as far as input is concerned, the things we really want to be, cons uh, to be able to do accurately is, is be able to provide a method of input that you can use. So for us, it's most likely a keyboard, <coughs> you know, for like to text, text input or even selecting, selecting uh, Icons, you know, the, the pick list or whatever. The one thing that does not work well, just keep moving down. The one thing that does not work well for uh, blind people using it is uh, a mouse. And that's something I would discourage the most. So many application developers will develop stuff for websites where you pretty much have to use a mouse in order to work the thing. And that's probably one thing that really messes us up. And, So the things I will demonstrate today really use keyboard as input. And, they, and for me, they provide spoken output. I don't have any low vision aids up here. I don't, I don't have low vision myself, but there are products that do that. Now, there's three systems that I am familiar with and will discuss in, in order probably in the chronological order in which they came into existence. And the first being Emacs speak. Are most of you familiar with Emacs in here? Yeah, I, I'm glad there's some people still using it. I, I really wondered, <laughs> you know, thanks to where we are here. Now, Emacs speak 
was developed, uh, there was a fellow named T.V. Raman, who was a blind computer scientist in, uh, at Cornell University, and he developed uh, a thing with Emacs where he would modify each of the applications. You know, you have the various extensions that run in Emacs, the various modes. And he modified them to, to push spoken output for various relevant things. So, like you, um, I was trying to see what the, my list here of the variable nodes it would do. Okay. Sorry, the barrel by has some junk in my heading notes. It's messing me up a little bit. Kind of slowing me down, unfortunately. Oh, darn it. Okay, I know where I'm at. And I guess what I'll do is I'll demonstrate some things in Emacs, and that's where I was setting up when I first came in here. So hopefully this will be close enough to that speaker. Beginning of buffer. That's still audible enough for you? I can move it that way. Semicolon, semicolon, if you want to create a file, comma, visit that file with C-X, hyphen C-X. Hyphen now what I'm doing there right now, I'm just in that scratch buffer, so I could even type some stuff in here. Semi end of buffer. Just to start with, like, editing a file. So if I... You know, I'm just typing here. We. I have this set up where it speaks each word I type. So, like I just type, we are. Are at the Southern California. Oh. P X E. Okay, Linux. Linux. P O. Now, I can just press up arrow and hear that line of text. We are at the Southern California Linux Expo. Dot. And I can use the regular Emacs keys, <clears throat> you know, the holding down the Alt key or the Meta key and then pressing F for going forward. Are at the Southern California Linux Expo. Or I go back. Linux California Southern. Uh, now, the other thing I want to show is one thing we do here. We are at the Southern California Linux Expo. I just went to the beginning of the line. But I'll go down here and I'll, I'll type in, I'll indent a little bit. Expo. All right, let's see. I am good day. On. Now, when I press up arrow to hear this line, you'll notice something here. It'll say something in front of it. I'm giving a presentation space. I. Okay, that was because of the capital letter. No, it was supposed to be telling me it's indented. Why well, didn't I do that? Okay, now I'll just read the line. Some reason it didn't indent for me. Okay, let's see. Indent one, I'm giving a presentation on Emacs Speak Dot. Indent one, I'm giving a presentation on Emacs Speak Dot. Expo, X, X, Expo. See, if I indent it, it'll tell me how much it was indented by. See how that works. Now, that's primarily what I could show you here. There are some extra aspects, but I would have to tune up Emacs Speak some more to uh, do it. It'll do syntax highlighting. It'll use funny voice sounds, difference in voices, to try to show you what's in quotes and all. Uh, at one point, I finally suspended using that because it, just, it was too sing-songy for me. <laughs> <laughs> and now I got to figure out how to turn it back on so to, in order to demo it, and so I didn't make that today. But I think another thing I'd like to show you, the Dyrid. Now, remember that, uh, you know, that's the directory viewer in Emacs, right? The, so for me, I can do Control X followed by a D. At dialed left, parent directory, right, parent colon, tilde slash. Okay, and then if I just hit enter for that current direct, my home directory. Steve name 2%. Now, when you press down the arrow key, if I were just using a conventional screen reader to read this whole line, I mean, it would read the dash, dash, dash. Well, in fact, if I do it here, I'll just speak up and do this other. It uh, would be something like... Permissions, hyphen, R, W, hyphen, R, hyphen, uh, hyphen, links, was, at, hyphen, handle, hyphen, definition. Code, see, it's too much stuff. Kind of hard to understand. So if I go down arrow... 2015, at ACB Affiliate Membership Management System revised 20,150,203B3.tokens. 
It just gives you the file name. It doesn't read all the, sorry, that long file name is awful to listen to. But in our ways, and I've unfortunately did enough homework to review, but there are commands we can use to go back and tell me what the date this file was written without having to monkey around with it. Now, I could use, I could cheat and use like my screen read to speak up, which I'll show you a little later. I could go back like this and. 2057. That's the size of the file, and you know, so that's the, and I can spell letter by letter. So it's February 7th. But the, the one thing, and uh, I like Diorate and Emacs, it's, it's, it's ability to, you know. Bash under logout. I don't want to erase that file. <laughs> So this is dot bash rc and dot bbbb bin bits bits hyphen hack bits. Now that's a directory, I think. Let's see. So I b i d s. Now it goes a higher pitch like that. That's because it's capital letters. D i b. And that's a directory. I can it makes some, some couple audio icons to use. That means it opened a folder. So now I'm in here. Or I can close that down and so I just close that up. So part of that is just using the normal commands you would use in Diarid, but with Emacs Speak they've customized it enough to where it'll it'll um, speak only the things that are relevant at the time. And there are other hotkeys that I could use that would speak specific parts of a file. Or uh, uh, let's see, now I can. I'm trying to think of some files I can erase. <laughs> I know what I'll do. I'll just where I'll do? I'll find something here in that bits folder. Lib login colon. Line four, call fifteen, T Y three. Okay, I'm taking a slight departure from Emacs for a moment. I just want to create a couple of files and then de demonstrate deleting them. Uh, let's see. Uh, S T E E password colon. Last login colon sometime 20. Okay, so I'll just create some like. CV space B R D S C at Lim Lap Tilda Slash Bits Dollar. D O U space space. D E S D 1. C at Lim Lap Tilda Slash Bits D O U space space. D E S D 2. C at Lim Lap Tilda Slash Bits Dollar. Okay, back to you, Max. Sorry, a little side shoulder, but. Now if I go into this bits directory again. If I find those test folders, that are test Agent, folders. Uh, house, uh, house, house, uh, hyphen, rig, stereo, house, alt, arc, just one, arc, just two, ask, oh, hi, oh, hyphen, find, and... Huh? Oh, hyphen, find, start, oh, hyphen, big sign, oh, hyphen, oh, hyphen, rig, stereo, oh, hyphen, rename, oh, hyphen, rig, oh, hyphen, track, hyphen, merge, I, hyphen, search, colon, hyphen, 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 File of file just dot sh. Flag to mp3. Flag to oh, mp3. Oh, there's a bunch of stuff in this directory out there. Flag to oh. mp3. You, you the bits directory rather than the bits directory. And, oh, am I in the wrong place? Steep diet by 89% of bbbb. Bid. Bids. Oh, I got two directories in the same. Oh, I, I directory has changed bids membership certified underscore decomp. Go tabby underscore paint members 2.csv. Members.csv. Well, not the same thing. Notes PayPal hyphen program. Program underscore 2000. No. Pro PayPal hyphen code.txt. Notes dot members dot members 2.csv. Go tabby underscore payment. Steep diet by name 9% in. I. B. Bid. I. B. R. T. S. Hold on. I created those files. Why weren't they there? Dilda slash bid dollar. Bottom. Left. Dilda slash dilda. Slash. B-I-D. Okay, it should have been there. That's not. I don't like it when demos don't go where I'll find it. Dot B B B B B B B Directory has changed on disk. Semicolon. Type key to update diet. Oh, I have to do that. Oh. Hit renamed on disk, so I have to. Oh, gee, what do I do here? Go tabby underscore payment dot txt colon ask your text. Quit. Go tabby dot com comma out of this is a brief summary of recent account activity and charges at the beginning of birth. Oh come on. Now I'm getting <laughs> this isn't going well. Bid style by name seventy four. I gotta learn more about how to do uh diary because I forgot if you had to refresh the directory and uh <laughs> Rom hyphen job dot TXT. Well, never mind that then. 
I gotta move on. I also wanna keep this from timing out, which it did. The other thing I'll show is calendar, and it's a little more interesting, but, uh, okay. And hyphen X. Uh, Sunday, January 24, 2016. Now, this is where if I had uh, enhanced voicing on it, it would do a little more with uh, the calendar, but see, now, like here, if you were just using a conventional screen reader to read the screen, it would be really hard to navigate calendar. I can use the arrow keys to move around. Saturday, January 23 to Friday, January 22. So I'm just pressing arrow, you know, left arrow. Wednesday, January, Friday, January 22, 2016. Friday, January 15. So I can go up by the week. And they have, you know, the, 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 the dire, I mean, the usual calendar commands, you can move around to the other uh, weeks, you know, months of the year and stuff. Saturday, January 16, <coughs> or one of the favorites that I think has been worded nice and it works well is, let's say I want to go to a date later in the year. So if I want to go to, uh, let's say, July 26th, I can go, you know, GD. Year left paren greater than zero right paren colon 2016. See, it's got the right year, so I'll just hit enter on it. Month name colon. Okay. Day left paren 1 hyphen 31 right paren colon. Tuesday, July 26th, 2016. See, it took me right there. And there's more I can do with calendar. In fact, if I, uh, and if I can go back to today's date. Marking uh, diary entries, Sunday, January 24. Took it right back today, and if I, I, I mark something in this entry, I should have a, uh, let's see, D. Preparing diary. Okay, that puts in another window, so if I. It's styled by name 69%. No. Or 73 hyphen Sunday, comma, January 24, comma, 2060, or 73 hyphen, or 24 equals, scale presentation. See, I put that in as a diary entry for today. <laughs> so, that's how we can do that. Sunday, comma, January 24, back comma, there. 2016. The additional things I might say about Emacs Speak, just as other, um, there are other app applications, as you know, very many. I don't have them currently running here on this machine, but I've, there's, I have used before VM, you know, for mail. Diary, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, GNUs, G-N-U-S. It's a newsreader. I like, I almost liked it better for email. And, and again, those were very well designed for uh, speech. You know, and what, what we call them sometimes is when this individual, when he develops these enabled apps, he calls them speech enabling. So they take the... Uh, let's say the VM app for the mailer, he'll, he'll say Emacs speak dash VM. And then I, I forget exactly how it's done, but if you launch VM, it, I think it looks first for Emacs dash, or Emacs speak dash VM. And so it launches the speech enabled app. And I think what I might do rather than go right into the next little deal is uh, maybe to see if anybody have any questions about Emacs and how the or this version Emacs speak and how that might work. Any questions about it? Is there any active development going on? Yeah, he's still, it's pretty much a one man operation, but yeah, he's, he still adds stuff. He's got, and there's a lot of things I haven't messed with yet, really, because I've been, I use different platforms sometimes and do, do, doing things on the Mac or whatever in iOS and all, but the, he's been enabling a bunch of stuff to deal with, uh, like with Google, the Google framework and all, and so. What I'm anxious to eventually do is see about, I think he's got some Google Docs integration, which would be really interesting to try there in Emacs. And, and I, there's a way you can integrate Google Calendar with this Emacs Calendar. I tried it several years ago and I ran into a bunch of performance problems and gave up, but that might even work better today. I'll have to try it again. So I've tended to use Emacs for specific things, mainly editing. I'm probably not taking advantage, as much advantage of Emacs speak as one can. And some people practically live by it, and you, that's their only solution. I, I just find I tend to use different solutions for different things, and so I, I may not utilize some of them fully. I'm sorry, what? I have, yeah, because it, it does really well, especially like with the indentation. I should probably pull up a, I have some pearl or something somewhere here. 
you know, here's the indentation of the, you know, the Perl code, like when you go down through the if statements. Let's see if I have something that might help with that. Sunday, January 17, 2000, it's styled by name 69%. GoPaddy.com, payments.txt, text top. GoPaddy.com, comma, our domain register, Q, this is a brief summary of recent account activity and charges at kill for GoPaddy.com, payments.txt, modified, semicolon, kill anyway, question. Left paren, yes, or no right paren, end of history, semicolon, no default. Steep diet by name 9%, it's hyphen hack. It's hyphen bar, asterisk, scratch, asterisk, list interaction bottom. End of buffer. Invent 5 I'm giving a presentation on emacspeak dot. Asterisk messages, asterisk messages bot, asterisk compile hyphen log, asterisk special 50 diary. Beginning of buffer, percent, percent, bin diet by name 47%. File just dot sh. Oh, there's my directory guy. I was just doing control there. I don't jump into the uh, bit of buffers. You know how it started speaking each one, so you knew which buffer you're in. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna. I hyphen search colon. And I just left arrow once to get out of that selection, that search highlight. Oh, I thought I had a, well, I could use that one. I mean. Okay, this is a podcatcher thing I worked on a long time ago. Let me, uh, I'll just view to view the file. U mode colon type C hyphen H for help, comma H for commands, comma Q pound or 55 hyphen pound. Pound PL potter hyphen and pound 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 steep close. So the pound when saying pound, of course, that's the comment field, so. Pound pound or 55 equals pound pound. Pound this script is free soft pound and pound use. I'm just skipping past these internet of these comments. I want to get to. Use warnings, semicolon. So you know, these aren't indented yet. Use get off colon colon STD semicolon. And if I move down faster, it interrupts. That's why you heard someone was skipping because I was interrupting. I'm just move, trying to get through this a little quicker. So you still variables. All these variable definitions. Come on, I thought there was some indented if statements or something here. Pound process can switch underscore opt colon left brace. Okay, so now we got left brace. So I know the next stuff should be intended. Invent for if left parent dollar opt underscore s right parent left brace. You can see all that punctuation being spoken there. That probably drag you in, you know. And that's where sometimes I prefer using a braille display with some of that stuff because then I don't have to listen through it or I speed that up anyway. Invent eight dollar subscriptions equals dollar opt underscore s semicolon. See, so I intended more. So yeah, I can do programming in this and then. Of course, uh, you know, when you save it, I go to another console or whatever and either run it or do whatever. Uh, yeah, there, that feature is available, and I'm, and I'm sorry that I, haven't, I didn't have a chance this weekend. I was trying to prepare some of this. I didn't get a chance to figure out how to remember to re-enable that because that's where it would change voice pitches and do things. If, for example, if you had stuff inside of quotes and it, you know, equal system, that, that, you know, like, oh, please. I, I got to where I couldn't stand it, so I turned it off. But I know that highlighting is handy, and he tries his best. And I think it depends on the synthesizer that you use. I'm using something called eSpeak. It has kind of a robotic sound to it. I know some of the people, that, uh, in fact, TV Raman, I think he uses a, uh, an older, outdated version of a synthesizer that I think may work better with that syntax highlighting, but I don't like installing old 32-bit code that's unsupported, so I don't use it. But uh, there, there is some audio version, audio ability to do that, and certain audio sounds it'll be made like if there was, a, and I'm sorry that I can't demonstrate that very well right now. But. Well, it's a whole different world. I mean, JAWS is a Windows screen reader, so you're working in Windows, and it's basically a screener. I would be more apt to compare it with 
something we'll talk about later, I hope I have, still have time, is Orca, which is a Windows, it's a screen reader that, um, uh, oh, damn, thank you for talking about, I gotta change that. Oh, I know, I'll just cheat here. 2.08 p.m. on Sunday, January 24, 2016. I want to see what time it was, and I was going to look at my phone, and then the thing timed out. So anyway, I'll just, there are a couple of things I can do here to get on, but I see we're running out of time. Really, according to that, it was 2.10 or 2.15. Well, let's see. I mean, if you go into an hour, isn't somebody using this room at 2.30? Uh, like yeah, so I got to... Uh, yeah, so I got I to gotta move. So, so Emacs is interesting, and there are different things to show there, and I think it was, I had a little more difficult time configuring things and getting it going, and I apologize. Um, <clears throat> the next thing that occurred, and I'm going to move on to speak up then. This is a kernel patch that was made. Uh, a fellow named Kirk Reiser up in I guess the University of Toronto or London, Ontario, somewhere, developed uh, originally, and then I think there's a team of people that worked with him on it, built Speak Up, and it's basically a patch to the kernel that would intercept any output that would be sent to the screen and have it spoken. And so that's what I was using a little bit over here in these consoles, plus it has a review function and everything, but it's a kernel patch. It is now in the staging kernels. I think it's still staging. So it's available in the mainstream kernel, and so if you get like a Arch Linux disk or Ubuntu or something, if they haven't modified the kernel any, then the, the speak up is there and you just got to load the right modules for it. So what I'll do there, now I'm, uh, and I'm here now, so what I'm going to demonstrate is some simple things to start with where I'll just enter a command and it'll speak the output. Okay, I, I'm going to go back to this other, oh, well I could go here. So if I wanted to list this directory, of course, it would be like this. Uh, L S space dash L. L S dash L. Total 152 dash W X R dash Now if that's too fast, I can slow it down some. Is that fast enough? Is that, is that slow enough for people, or are they? Right four. I will try that. Now I'm going to go in and review that what I just heard because all that was a bunch of you know it was a directory listing, a long listing. So I can use arrow keys to review this part of the screen. That's another aspect I'll demonstrate is the reviewing of it. So I can hold down the caps lock key, the insert key, and I can go up a line. Or if I want to hear just hear the file names, I just go to the the right end of the line. Test two. Okay, there's that test two file I was trying to find. And see so if I go up arrow, like uh, up, you know, another line, or in this review file, I'm just reviewing, and I understand it doesn't show any kind of visual cursor when I do this. <laughs> so I just press F, you know, a key here to speak the current word I'm under, and, and that's why I interrupted the other stuff. Otherwise, you could hear this. You see? So I know I can go on up the, the, the list there, and I, I won't. Now, if I want to delete test one, of course, you know, in Linux, you won't get any kind of, well, I can do it with, with and without a prompt. If I, re, let's say I delete test one, I just do rm. Rm space d e s d one. Steve at Linux did the slash it stutter. See, no prompt or no warning because I didn't put any parameters on. Now, if I do rm. Uh, rm space dash i space. Uh, test two. D e s d two. RM colon remove regular empty file test two question. So it prompted you, and you heard the question, I don't have to repeat it, or at least I understood it. Did everybody understand that prompt okay? <laughs> and I'll just type, you know, why. Why? Steve at Linux did the slash it stutter. Okay, those files are gone. C, D. And I'm going to change the directory. Steve at Linux did the dollar. So it speaks the, reads the prompt to you. Now, there's some things where we can do highlight, uh, some like highlight tracking. That's what I was starting to do earlier when I was messing with the also mixer. So if I go, I'll do that as root, but if I go into also mixer. A L S A M I X E R. Also mixer B1.1.0 card colon HD. And I'll just interrupt speech. I'll just quiet it. And let's see. I think I put highlight tracking on. Paste. No. 9.0068. Damn it. 
Okay, it's a pretty chattery screen, but if I go over here to make this earphone volume. Highlight tracking. There, highlight tracking. And I should have the... Oh, I thought it... Wait a minute. Master headphone. 7383 less rate, 8300 less rate, 100 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 less Done. Select the network you wish to use. Flat description. I'll do highlight tracking again. Paste. Oh, no, not that way. Read window. Cursor in, cursor in on. Highlight tracking. Less okay, greater, less cancel, greater. Less okay, less okay, less, less okay, greater, less right. cancel, greater. Oh, this isn't working. What happened there? Aborted left tracking. Should have gotten a list of the Wi-Fi stuff. Now, I can also go up and just review that uh, list to see if it populated. Sometimes I don't think it populates. Left bracket root at lib in the right bracket under Wi-Fi dash menu. Scanning for network dot dot dot. Done. Select the network you wish. Let me just review that I got stuff there and show. Black, 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 right. Select, select the net flag start at plus dot steep tick as I. Left dash 52 steep tick as I phone start at UPA 2 dash 50. Steve. It must be like since I'm connected to my iPhone, I'm only seeing one entry there. It's not a very good demo, but well. Aborted left bracket root. Read window. Well, anyway, this shows I'm connected to my iPhone, but it didn't. No window. No window. Uh, let's see. It's highlight tracking. I'm trying to think what else I should demonstrate and speak up. The thing with speak up, this is about as close a thing as you might when you're asking about JAWS or something, although I don't consider it a text console. I think more of this is like the DOS screen readers we had of old, like the Vocalize or uh, I think JAWS had a, I think they had a version for DOS also. The JAWS is well known for those that aren't maybe totally familiar with screen readers. Freedom Scientific has done, gone out of their way to be, make them the biggest hitter in the game. and. I don't necessarily think they're the best screen reader, but they seem to twist a lot of market share and, you know, so. Now, does anyone have any questions about speak up? It's a little more, I think, just straightforward and it displays what's on the kernel and you can have some input for reviewing. The only thing I might comment on is that uh, some people have been doing a lot of debate lately about any further development of speak up because frankly a lot hasn't been going on but if you want to do more advanced things like selected parts of the screen to be spoken and this kind of thing, <clears throat> it might be a lot easier to write a user based screen reader or, or user space screen reader running it as an application in foreground instead of a kernel. And so that, that area has been discussed and there, I guess there's a couple of screen readers out there that have been developed to run in the foreground like that. I'm not sure how much work is being done on them. I don't, I've never tried them. But that would probably give enhance a little more uh, flexible output on the, on the console, for example. Might there be any questions on this? If not, I'll move to the GNOME part, which is probably more interesting to some folks. I guess hearing none, I'll move on to the third one. Oh no, what happened here? Okay, well, I don't have any speech now. This is not what I wanted. Is anything showing on the screen for you guys? Oh yeah, that, that, ever since they went to the GNOME shell, I, I think things are, yeah, I have to get into one of these other. I tend to like to go here. In fact, I even customized or adjusted the GNOME shell option so I could have a written old fashioned desktop again. 
Now this is Orca, the screen reader that was uh, originally, I'm not sure where its exact beginnings were, but Sun Microsystems uh, had an accessibility office and they were doing a lot of development. After Oracle bought uh, Sun out, then they canned most of the people who worked in the accessibility office there, and so that almost we were afraid it was going to wreck this project. But uh, <clears throat> there's just another people that kind of took on the lead development. In fact, uh, this Joan Marie Diggs, a woman that used to teach accessibility software at the Carroll Institute for the Blind in uh, Boston, took it upon herself, learned Python, and I mean, here's somebody that was a trainer or teacher before. I don't think she ever programmed, to my knowledge, in her life. And uh, this started back in about, well, shortly around the time of that acquisition. She might have been working a little bit with uh, Willie Walker before he left, but uh, it was probably like 2009, maybe. I'm trying to forget when the Oracle about Sun. But from that point on, she's taken on a lot of the, the lead development of uh, Orca and the changes and fixing bugs and things. And it's gotten far enough in the show to be a testament of Python, I guess, because Orca is written in Python, mostly, and it, she's actually figured out how to, I mean, uh, access all these uh, low-level exposures from Firefox, for example. They've had a lot of bugs in Firefox that affect what is exposed to the screen reader. And, uh, you know, she's actually been digging into this heavy metal stuff. It's pretty amazing. Uh, so anyway, the, the background of it, but right now I'm sitting at the, in a typical Nautilus window, or if you're on a Mac, it would have been a Finder window. But now again, it's, right now I'm just basically using the arrow keys, and this would be like if you were, like somebody mentioned JAWS earlier, it would be like if you were in Windows in the Windows Explorer and using the arrow keys to move around in, uh, you know, using JAWS. So if I move down, you know, using down arrow here, I'll go through this. What's the matter? Are we missing something? The window is showing on the big screen. Oh, it's not at all? Oh, boy, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> I use it with speech, but uh, I don't know if it shows on my laptop in front of me or not. I, I'm totally oblivious. Somebody wants to look. Yeah, it's here. Let me see if I can. Oh, wow. I'm sorry. That, uh, That's all right. It's one of the things we should have set up ahead of time. And sorry about that. Oh, well. Oh, there it is. I don't know. Okay, what did you do? Uh, I haven't done anything yet. Oh, oh. Well, I mean, you said... Yeah. Uh oh, now you went into that. Oh, I hate that. Yeah, sometimes you get into that. There's one thing, there's something called an overview window that I guess shows up sometimes, and, and I lose speech sometimes in there, and it's something I've not been able to. Accessibility menu, one on one. I can't try to System menu, one on one. Brighter side of 0.1. 758 remaining, 82%. Window. Okay, displays. Hey, at least yours is in English. Hardware uh, One of two. Yeah, okay. I'm not seeing a uh, thing to say mirror. Wait, maybe arrange combined displays? See, I thought it was going to have to do something with that uh, function F2 or something, but that's not... Yeah, don't have to do something with it. Cancel push button. Displace frame. Arrange command. Displace push button. All settings. Push button. So you guys were able to oh, see the console and the Emacs, but not the oh, GNOME, huh? Let me make this. Huh. Display primary show the top part. Activities open. You on this display second. Very display on this display with another to create an extra workspace. Give a show your end. Existing. You on both display aspect ratio for free turn off resolution. Oh, so it's speaking down after the first. Oh, it's not even here. Give a show your end. Existing. You on both displays. Free on four. Uh, okay, what did you do? So I can know for future, not what did you do? Okay, I'll, I'll tell you after. <laughs> okay. Settings, changes, we'll rebooting 17. Displaced frame. 
Okay, so huh. let me go ahead and close this out of your way. Oh. Okay, now I'm going to, hey, well, he helped me. Hey, thanks. Well, thank you for pointing it out to me because I wouldn't have, uh, yeah, I wouldn't have known either. Uh, I'm going to go into the Orca settings because I can slow down speech, and that'll be one of the things that I was trying to show is dialogues. So, you know, you know my Windows dialogues and things, so to... Oh. Now this is, and I'll hopefully I get to speech right away and you'll, you'll slow it down. But you see right now we're in a tab, it said tab one of eight and it's uh, screen reader preferences and... Voice page, tab, two of eight. And that's probably what I want. Speech page, tab, three of eight. It's either voice or speech, I think it's speech. Enable speech check box checked. Verbosity panel, verbos, selected radio button, one of two. See verbose radio button one or two, huh? Activation level panel, most of your content panel, only speak displayed text check. Speak blank lines check box checked. Well, I have to go to voice. Okay, these are nothing to do with speech, right? Let me go back. Uh, here we are. Right now it's 80. I got 80. I think it's a range like 80 of 0 to 100 or something. Oh, all right. Yeah, that's a little better, isn't it? Huh? Okay. So now if I go back here, and I'm still in this dialogue, so I'm just pressing tab. So, so far in these, you don't have to do any like special keys or keystrokes like you did in Emacs or wherever. You know, I, I don't really have to do that much screen reviewing. So you can hear all that. So it tells you the status of the state of a checkbox. Yep. I'm just going to close it. I don't need to go with all the other tabs and stuff in there. Although I just show you that, like here. See, so tab two of eight, because there's a tab control. It's like in Windows, they would have called it a tab control anyway. Speech page tab, three of eight. Braille page tab, four of eight. It's been configuring Braille displays and stuff. Key echo page tab, five of eight. Key bindings page tab, six of eight. Pronunciation page tab, seven of eight. So these are different options for Orca, where you can go in and tell it how to pronounce stuff, or to use punctuation, or hide punctuation, whatever. Text attributes page tab. And that has to do with some color stuff. You go in there and turn certain things on, and it'll speak and tell you what. I think that's what it does in there. I, and again, with speech, sometimes it gets too verbose if it starts telling you the color of every little thing on there. But you could turn it on if you're trying to uh, verify some stuff you're doing, like in a document or something. Okay, what happened here now? Oh. How come I tab? Oh, I don't key. Oh. Helps to press the right key, you know it. Text attributes panel. Reset push button. Adjust selected attributes. Zoom up one push button. I think if I press control tab, hold on, hold on. Help push button. Apply push button. Cancel push button. Okay push button. Screen reader settings reloaded. Documents frame. Content new panel. As so when I left it there with a lower speech rate, but. Ooh, sorry. Ooh. Didn't mean to do that. Bank statements collapsed, 30 IO check collapsed, 4 items, folder 7, March 2011, IBM employment collapsed, job underscore search collapsed, 23 ASL collapsed, 2 items, the SH employee packet collapsed, 2015 convention 2.html 954 bytes text 7 till 2015. Yeah, some of those files are long. I'm going to see where the, uh, 2015 trying to find a directory I could go into the... Gets underscore roster 3, it's steam talk dot txt 376 bytes text yesterday. I'll use this file to open, uh, let's see. It's under it's steam talk dot txt 376 bytes text yesterday. Budget 2008. Well, I want to find something here I can open without being, uh... Checkbook dot dot 58.6 checkbook dot dot 19 source dot dot 7.8 kb spreadsheet 70 upper 2000. And I can interrupt speeches like the other because I still hear... But it does describe the file and stuff to you so that, uh... Cover you hold dot dot 10 point the asset underscore 2010 dash 03 dash 25 dot txt 3 point asset schools check in dot xl up down example dot expenses dot xls 13.8 kb field underscore tests dot dot 8 point up 
Okay, that's an ODF document, or, or off, open office document, so I can show another app in there. So I should be able to hit enter on this key in it, uh, on this file. It should open open office for me, or leave office doc, or writer, I should say. Taking its time, though. I have, act I have actually been having some problems with LibreOffice sometimes locking up when I try to open certain spreadsheets, and I hope that's not happening in this writer document. Okay, it looks like we're good. No. What's going on here? Field testing. Hello, this is a test document. I want to see what happens with variable fields like date and time. See, I'm just arrowing down this, and I... Oh, it looks like it's fed up on me, too. I guess, oh man, the rate must be set per application. I didn't think it was. Let me slow speech down on that one if I can. Screen reader preferences. General page tab. Voice page tab. Voice type BFC. Capitalization style. Non combo box. Rate. Slider 60 60. Yeah, it's there where it should be. 61 60. So why did it go? For some reason, LibreOffice is making it go faster. I don't know, unless I've got a thing set in there. Let's see, I can go into application specific settings. It's just stuff like this that makes me lose a lot of time. I think I'd insert control space. Screen reader preferences for Office. General page tab. One on I voice page, speech page tab. Three on I voice page tab. Voice type speech system, speech synthesizer. Person, capitalization, slider 8080. Yeah. Oh, see, it, was, it had its own settings. I didn't think it had its own. Oh, well, don't have to do it by default. Capitalization style, person, speech synthesis system, voice type, voice page tab. Okay, push button. Cancel push button. Okay, push button. Screen reader settings reloaded. Field blank. Blank, blank, blank. Blank, 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 blank. This document was last updated to 28.34 p.m. on Sun, January 24, 2016. You see, I can arrow around in this thing, too. W, A, S, space, L, A, S. Kind of like the other uh, editors and things. Blank, date and time. Hello, this is a test document. I want to see what happens with variable fields like. Okay, I didn't do much in this document. I thought I had more stuff in it. Date and time blank. This document was last updated to 28.30. See, and I can press Control Q to get out of it. You can see here as input, we're using a lot of keystrokes. I don't use a mouse. I don't use this touchpad on here ever. ever document so. frame. Content view panel. And probably if I, I want to get into Firefox, because that's where I think probably more interesting with the web, you know, Windows anyway, or GNOME. But I'll, and I have a shortcut key on my machine, I'll launch Firefox. Document frame. Content view panel. Field underscore test dot dot eight point nine KBD document two mark two thousand and ten. Tree level one. Mozilla Firefox frame. Document frame. Document frame. Finished loading home thrown solutions. Okay, there's an old blog I have that I haven't done much with forever. I'm gonna I'm gonna go to a, a site that I'm familiar with. Uh, I think I'll just go by hand. Search or enter address entry homestrome.com slash lock slash selected. W Metro. So again it does, it, I have it set to speak on words, so as soon as I hit a character then it you know. And what do I want to do? I'm gonna go to this website. This is the loading. Please wait. Document frame. Finish loading. Providing public transportation. I want to use this because I want to demonstrate tables and how they've done. They've done a pretty good job with some bus routes. So I got to find the, the combo boxes to get to the. Facebook link. Link. Oh, and the other thing. Now, and, and I should explain a little bit if I can quickly. You can use the arrow keys to move around the page, and it'll say if it's a link or not. Twitter. You know, see so YouTube and then link. RSS, link. Now these seem to be on one line, one link per line or something. Mobile site, Yuck. link, text only, link, entry, submit query push button. 
See now, like here, it said submit query push button. If I press tab, submit query push button. That's a push button. But if I go back, Polymetro Phoenix public transportation entry focus mode. Okay, it's so an entry in a focus mode. That means I'm now in the in an edit field where I can type. Because before this, submit query push button. Browse mode. Okay, now it says browse mode, and here I can do things like one letter navigation will jump you around the page. So if I want to go to a heading, I can type the letter H. Trip planner heading level one. Google Transit planner heading level one. So that's another heading. Next right heading level one. And it gives you the heading level numbers on it, because you know you can have up to six heading levels. Port of directors name it to NCO. Link heading level three. See, it went to heading level three. So I'm going to go back to the trip planner. Next right I think heading it's level one. Google Transit planner heading level one. I hope I have time still. Let's have another. 2.33.57 p.m. Oh, running over already. Is somebody out there waiting to come in here? Oh, really? Nobody's using this room now? Okay. Good. Well, I'll take a little time. Unless you all want to do something else. <laughs> I want to try and show a table here, so I'm going to see if I can get there quickly enough. Uh, Start address entry from selected. Destination address entry. Des destination link combo box. One of three. Arrival slash leaving date entry. Arrival slash leaving time entry. So I'm just pressing tab here, going through these in there with combo boxes in the push button. Browse mode. Stop hash entry. Focus mode. There's some place where I was able to just say go to the roots. Get okay. next right push button. Browse mode. Click here if you do not know your stop hash right double angle bracket link. Rotating transit art series partnership with Influx link. HTTP www.alimetro.org slash projects underscore and underscore. Oh, okay, enough of that. Click here if you do not know your stop hash right double angle bracket link. Oh, that's a look up stop numbers. Rotating to right kit panel link. HTTP. Oh, I did this yesterday and I'm, the other day and I'm trying to remember how I got into those tables. They, 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 make you want, they, make you, they want to make you use this uh, trip planner thing where you have to put in everything and I just want to look up a bus table. <laughs> Full Caribbean Angel panel link. New shop on 19 online tools link. Oh, HTTP.alimetro.org slash online tools slash service changes link. Oh, and another thing I can jump from link to link by pressing K and shift K. Board of directors. Commute solutions. Link yeah. learn about trip reduction programs. I'm way beyond anything I want. So I can shift K. Board of direct service changes. Online tools image shop on 19. Oh. Public Arabian Angel Panel image link. New right kit panel image link. Rotating transit art link here if you do not know the full trip planner. Link. Next right. Link. Google transit. Link. Trip planner. Link. Need help. Link. Getting on board. Link. Paying your fare. Link. Planning your trip. Link. Home. Link. Metro Phoenix public transportation. See, I'm just link. going from link to link to link. Home. You can link. also go to like combo box and stuff. I type the letter C, I believe. Type zero one combo box one of three. Oh, maybe this is it. Let's see. Date entry. Type zero one combo box one of three. Date entry. Push button. Oh, uh, go to date. Uh, type zero one combo box one of time. Departing after selected radio button. Uh, Next right link. Google Transit link. Trip planner link. Type zero one combo box. Oh, it's time. I, I thought it was type. All right, wait a minute. Wrapping to bottom. Select a root type dot 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 combo box. One of four. Or enter root name slash number here entry. Push button. Or enter root name slash number here entry. Focus mode. Select a root type dot 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 combo box. One of four. Browse mode. Focus mode. Okay, I want focus mode so I can arrow down to this thing. Not doing it. Select a route. Collapsed. Or enter route name slash number here entry. Select a route oh, type a dot, dot dot combo box. One of four. I thought I remembered how to do this, get into those tables directly. I have to see if I can find something else. But the thing we do in tables is what I wanted to demonstrate, and I'm sorry I can't right now without wasting everybody's time. Is that you then have arrow navigate? You can use uh, you hold down like the shift in the case of Oracle, you hold down the shift and alt keys, and then you can use the arrow keys and you'll navigate around in a side of a table. And you can hear rows and columns, and then if the headers are properly marked, you'll even hear the heading of each column as you go by. And that's why I wanted to demonstrate that, but I'm not finding a very easy way to get there. Browse mode about Valley Metro link new fun wrapping to top. No more tables. No more tables. Oh, okay, so not tables here. Type zero one combo box. One of three. Colon zero zero combo box. Two of three combo box. Three of three. Departing after. Selected rate time. 
So you don't want to force you into entering times and dates and then they can tell you a route. I, I didn't want that. Huh? Time, zero, one combo box. One colon, zero, zero combo, combo box. Destination leak combo box. One on three. Push button. Leak combo box. One on three. Select a route type dot 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 combo box. One select, on four. That's what I was hoping for. Select route type. Focus mode. But it won't work. Browse mode. Select a route type dot dot. Oh, it's not working. Browse mode. What's that? I wonder if they're loading up with your browser showing no scripts being enabled. Yeah, I love that one. Hans told me about that one. I use it. No, I have used this website and I demonstrate I did this the other day and that's why it's making me so mad that I can't. <laughs> huh? Yeah, I don't know. I'm thinking about that. The, the thing was before it would say you could choose a, uh, a type like tra uh, trains or trains or bus or local buses and that, and that's what I can't seem to find. And once it did that, and I don't think it was this was full trip planner, but so I was trying to not get into that trip planner thing. Or enter route name slash upper here entry. And I can't seem to find any other way to get there. Push button. Board of directors meeting information. Push button. Select this changes link. Online tools link. HTTP www.alimetro.newshop on 19th Avenue Canadian Angel Blue Right Click Panel Link HTTP Transit Art Series Partnership with it Click here if you do not know your stop Hash right double angle bracket link That's a stop ID, I don't want that Get next right push button Stop hash entry Focus push button Browse mode Arrival slash leaving time entry Focus mode Browse mode Go to full trip planner link Maybe that one, I don't know, see Please wait Document frame. Finished loading Mali Metro trip plan. No more combo boxes. About Mali Metro. Oh, link. Please. Use and media center. Link. Employment. Link. Event calendar. No more headings. Huh? Yeah, I'll start to see if I can find it. Let's see. New and media center. Employment event calendar. Mobiles. Text only. Link. Mali Metro Phoenix Public Transportation Home. Link. Plan in your trip. Link. Trip planner. Next right. Link. System map. Link. Route schedules and maps. Link. Maybe that one. Loading. Yeah. Please wait. Document frame. Finished loading Mali Metro bus route. About Mali Metro. No more combo boxes. Damn it. Face link. For combo boxes for sure. Twitter, YouTube. Link. Route schedules and maps heading Choose from the menu on the left to see schedules and maps for Mali Metro Rail. Mali Metro. Link bus service, local and express bus service, neighborhood circulators, and rural. Connectors. Tips about schedules heading level 3. Home. Link. About Mali Metro. Link. No, no, no. Home. Purchase an online route. Link. Neighborhood circulators. Link. Rapid service. Link. Express service. Local limited stop service. Link. Local bus routes. Link. Yeah, that's Loading. Right Please wait. I thought there was a combo box for those. Finished loading Mali Metro local bus routes. About Mali Metro. Local bus routes heading level 1. So you know you type H, it took me right to the bus routes I go through all the other noise. Select a route heading level 2. Yeah. Click heading to sort my column head, hash column header. Route name, schedule column header. Alert oh. column header. Map oh. column head. Zero. Row 2, column 1. Oh, okay, I'm in a table. Okay, so. I was. Route name, schedule. Central app. Route hash. Zero. Row two. Column one. Beginning of row. Well, it's not working like I wanted it to. One, three. Van Buren, seven, eight, ten, twelve, thirteen, fifteen, sixteen, seven, nine, twenty, 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 Link. Link, PDF. okay. Now we can look at the limited bus service for Sunday there, because I'll probably look at today's thing. So once it loads the... 75, 70, 72, stop stay slash rural. Link, PDF, link. No, PDF? Oh, God, no. Stop stay slash rural. I hope not. New route. PDF link. No. Glendale slash 24th Street link. New route Glendale slash 24th Street Shed. PDF link. Stop Stale slash Rural link. New route Stop Stale slash Rural Schedule. PDF link. Stop Stale slash Rural link. New route Stop Stale slash Rural Schedule. 
Okay, I want to view it, not PDF. I don't please. Finished loading Polymetro Route 72. Stop scale slash rural. Table with 55 rows 13. Yeah, that looks what I want. Now, you'll notice across the top here, and I'm using the table navigation key, so I hold down the left, uh, uh, with Orca anyway, I hold down the shift and uh, alt keys, and then I use the arrow keys. Stop hash 14,656, column header, rural and Chandler BLVP, row one, column two. You're going to keep hearing stop number so-and-so, it's kind of annoying, but that's part of the heading. Stop hash 14,660, column header, rural and Ray. Row one, column three. Rural and Ray. Another reason I like to speed this stuff up. <laughs> stop hash 14,669, column header. Rural and Elliot. Row one, stop hash 14,682, column header. Rural and Southern. Row one, column five. Okay, that's near where my home is, my permanent home anyway, when I'm back home. So let's say I'm at Rural and Southern. I want to go down and I can read the times for that day, or the, I think it's today's schedule. And I'll just press down arrow. 5.40 a.m. Row two, column five. 5.34 a.m., row 3, column 5. See, it tells you the row column numbers. Now, if I just hear the time and I don't want to hear the row and column number, I can just interrupt it. 5.54 a.m., 6.40 a.m., 6.31 a.m., 6.51 a.m., 7.11 a.m., row 8, 7.31 a.m., 8.11 a.m., row 11, column 5, 8.31 a.m. Okay, 8.31, looks like a half-hourly schedule on Sunday. It's pretty remarkable, I think, for public transit these days on a Sunday. But let's say now I want to go up the street, then I can press right arrow up that from this time point. Temp Trans Center, 8.48 a.m., row 12, column 6. See, te Tempe Transit Center, of course it's a temp, but that's because they don't know how to say Tempe. But then, and if I press right arrow, I'll just keep hearing the times. Stop stay and McDowell, 907 a.m. So I know that I'll get there at 9.07. So, I mean, it's a practical use of table navigation. And I remember when I first got on the web using screen readers, especially like in Windows and when they didn't have table navigation like this, it would have been impossible to navigate one of these. Because you'd either have to read line by line by line or link by link and, you know. So this is how tables navigate. And it's the one thing I wanted to show you in, in a Firefox. Now, I don't know if I really have time to go into, like, Thunderbird. It's a mail client. It'd be a much similar thing, kind of thing. But, I mean, up and down a, pink, a pick list and open the messages you want to hear. Does anyone have any questions about like, like Orca and Gnome? I, you know, I know I kind of glossed through this fairly quickly, but... Well, I wasn't clear when you're using Firefox, is, is this navigation of the table and the heading... Right. Is that all from Orca, or is there a Firefox plugin, or is it both? Basically, it's Orca, and, and what happens is Firefox exposes, and I'm summarizing this as an amateur because I don't know exactly, Firefox knows what tables, and, and, and that's why semantic markup is so important. Because if somebody doesn't put tables in there, if they just lay that stuff out in some way and you know, physically made it line up, maybe by using the pre-anchor or something on the pre-tag, you know, in HTML, this wouldn't work. But yeah, so Orca is really providing the one-letter navigation. Some people call it quick nav. Quick navigation just depends on who's your product you're using. Apple does it too with uh, uh, voiceover. And, uh, and they have it in JAWS, and most of those have now some version, you know, variant of it that pretty much work the same way. So like I type, I type the letter T, and it said, take me to the nearest table, or the first table. And I could press T again. If there was a second table, it would have gone to it. But yeah, that's, that's Orca providing that uh, one letter navigation of the objects that Firefox has exposed through semantic markup to say, yeah, here's the headings, and here's the buttons, and whatever. So it's important for the, the browser has to expose that information or make it available in a some sort of object model, I guess. But so I guess there's, no, there's no modification to Firefox to, to make this to make it special for us. I mean, it's the mainstream version of Firefox. Is just that they've, they've had to expose the right information to make sure that stuff is properly marked up. I mean, th amazingly enough, the, with Orca, you can actually get into these, what I call clickables. I don't have a website right handy. I can confirm those. You know, where you have those fake links, you've probably seen them, or you might not. You might just click on them with a the mouse and not think anything about it. But <clears throat> the screen reader will say it's clickable, but it's not necessarily a link or a button. You know, so it's a void control, probably a JavaScript void controller or something. And, you, you know, the... And so we can sometimes route mouse to it. Now, let's see if I can do that here. Sometimes this doesn't work because of a Firefox bug. Let's see. I'm at, uh... 
Ten, trans, center, 8.48 a.m., row 12, column 6. There's one thing I can try and bring up real quick if this will work. And there is a bug in Firefox, in fact, I complained about it recently, where sometimes you can't route the mouse to it, but you can route the pointer to it. If I use some keys, it's kind of like a review, what we did in uh, SpeakUp. Okay, it didn't do anything. Push button. Valley Metro Route 72, Scottsdale slash rural. See, I'm not in the right place. For some reason, I didn't put it where I wanted, but... Valley Metro Route 72, Scottsdale slash rural. And there's not a clickable, so I don't want to do anything here, but... Push button. Oh, there is a push button there, but now if I wanted to, I could just press the key, and it would simulate a mouse movement, so I'd be like pressing a left click with a mouse, or a touchpad or whatever. Now, in other cases, I think there's parts of websites where that's supposed to work better, and that's the one thing I have had, we've had some trouble with, and I was, I was, it was noted that it was a bug in Firefox that I think it, that is not, the screen isn't scrolling for the internal buffer or, or whatever they're using. I know I'm sounding kind of wishy-washy there, but I don't exactly know. Because you probably saw the screen as I was scrolling down it and saw this whole this route on Tempe and everything, but uh, for some reason routing the mouse pointer to it with these screen or with the Orca commands in there isn't, wasn't putting it in the right spot. But <clears throat> when those do work, you can click those clickables and they're, you know, they're, they're kind of a... In fact, I don't know if we have any clickables on this site. Let's see if I... Focus mode. Browse mode. No, how do I find clickables? Focus mode, browse mode. No, I'm not sure of any. Wrapping to top. Submit query push button. Wrapping to top. Submit query push button. Okay, there's only one button on the page. It said, and you know, when I said wrapping to top, I meant, you know, going back up to where the, there's only one button on the page, apparently. <laughs> so, anything else on it? I know Firefox is probably the most interesting part of this whole thing, and, it, you know, and obviously it depends on how people code a web page, how good this experience will be. Any further questions on it? Or? <laughs> Sorry. I've uh, been working on teaching myself Python, just reading some books on it and stuff, because I'd like to learn it, because I want to contribute to this project, and that's one of the reasons, one of the motives. And, and I've done with stuff with Perl before. And Python is interesting, so yeah, I, I'd like to. I just haven't got quite involved with it. Just like I want to learn Drupal, too. <laughs> so. Between the day job, they come home and they say, okay, an hour a night, what do you, where do you spend it? <laughs> or, or whatever. So, plenty of stuff to learn out there, that's for sure. Python tends to have a lot of the simple and There's a lot of documentation clear Oh, I don't know. I think it depends on the environment you're editing in. I mean, I, as a day job person, I've worked with COBOL, but I've usually used a, a Windows screen reader and that sort of setup, but, and using a ISPF, you know, on the mainframe and all that. But, but here, as long as you can code in text, like, uh, you know, Perl, Ruby, whatever. I, don't, I just don't know some of those languages. I know Perl, and Perl and Python have been learning, and I've, I did some stuff in C a long time ago. In fact, a long time ago, I actually wrote a, was it for, it was for a DOS screen, I think it was for a DOS screen reader. I actually wrote a synthesizer driver for it. It was kind of fun, but it was a long time ago. But I mean, any, any language that has, you know, meaningful text and if you use an editor, like I like Emacs for that sort of thing because of the indentation and, and of course it does self-correcting almost like an IDE where if you leave out a parenthesis, it'll tell you it's missing. I should have demonstrated should sure demonstrate that. I mean, think about that. Yeah, that's what I mean to do. So I think I'm going to do that. Yeah. I will make, make some closing comments just saying that uh, for some of the stuff that make this all happen and make this work as well as like what you're seeing today is, and I touched on it already a little bit, developers need to use standard controls, standard tools, you know, standard widget libraries and things. Don't get cute with your custom widgets and whatever. A lot of these graphical things will work pretty well just out of the box if you use standard stuff. 
Same thing with web design. But I think you know this stuff's come a long ways. It has, has some bugs and different things, but the progress has been made in the last, say, 10 or 15 years in these areas has really made a difference with uh, accessibility of the Linux platform, and you know it, it rivals Windows and Mac or any of them. So thank you for thank you for your time. Yep. I'll shut this up. Then. Yeah, that, yeah, that would be really good. Well, it's like I had a problem with the, the app last night with Southwest Airlines, where I was trying to save a boarding pass. Now, they've improved the app, they made some changes, but yet when I got to the point where it says save into a uh, passbook and whatever, all of a sudden it had these four links now, and none of them worked. And I was on the phone like several hours fighting, trying to try and get through to a human lesson and say, well, how can I save this boarding pass so I can use it tonight when I go home? And uh, yeah, that was a circus that, that used to work. 